I'm Rick Bine, I'm the faculty, geography faculty at IUPUI, and I'm going to tell you a story about a horse. A horse is named Flicka, got named after some movie uh, that was built, that came out back in the 50s. And uh, this is in, the, in Colorado here, on the, just on the edge of the Rockies here. And we had a farm there and a lot of animals and whatever. And we had horses. My dad had somehow discovered that horses, he didn't know this, but he seemed to sense it, but that horses had a kind of a healing uh, relationship with people. And uh, he had grown up with horses where he uh, would get away from home. He had a, my grandfather was rather abusive. And, he would get on his horse and go up in the foothills of the Rockies and stay all day wandering around with his horse and got his therapy that way. But anyway, when we came to the farm, Dad decided we had to have horses. Well, economically, we did use them a little bit because we had cattle and we needed to cut the cattle, separate them and this sort of thing and drive them around. But very rarely did that happen. So we had a corral with horses in them. And uh, Dad would get horses from these old uh, Wyoming ranchers and they would uh, have these old, they were cutting horses, but say they were really fast and, and they would separate the calves from the mothers. And they, these calves were very agile, fast. Well, these horses had to be the same way. And uh, you got riding one of those horses, you just, you tied a hold on to that saddle horn and just for dear life because that horse was zigzagging and jerking this way and that and get fall off, get thrown off pretty easily. Well, anyway, after a few years, these horses slow down. They can't do that anymore. So they would, uh, one of them gave the, uh, one of these old cutting horses to Dad, and he brought it home, and we had it in the corral. It was a good kid horse. We rode it a lot and hung on to that, that old horse and whatever, and uh, he took care of us too. And so we, it was a good relationship. But then Dad got, this, there was another situation where Dad was, some people had this horse, and they asked him to, and give him some hay, and he saw, okay, I'll sell it to you. So he would give them baled hay and bring it in every now and then. And about, uh, and they had this horse, they got it as a colt, really tiny, and somehow its mother died. And so they brought the horse to their house. They were in the city anyway, but very little, maybe a large lot in the city, but they had this horse there. And it was so cute, and they kept it and let it go in the house, and it would come around. This cat, Flicka, that was her name, she thought she was people, and she, she went into the house and hung out with the people, and she never saw another horse until, she, until later. And she would come to the table and eat the people food, and she sort of had her place there. And they, they, they thought this was so cute, and this little colt was just hanging out with them, and they kept them uh, entertained. And, uh, but Dad would continue to provide some hay. The horse would go outside and eat the hay, but it, but also ate people food. So, uh, and she really thought she was people. Finally, Dad went in to collect his money for the hay, and they said, "Hey, uh, how much do we owe you?" And Dad says, "Well, twenty-five bucks." And here, why don't you just take this horse? Because it had become a horse at that point. It got big, started to grow up, and it was bullying the children and stealing their food and whatever. And, uh, it was sort of the pecking, became top of the pecking order, and they decided this horse had, had outgrown his, his uh, welcome there. So uh, Dad brought, the, the, brought this colt, a big colt, about eight, ten months old already, maybe a year, brought him home, and, uh, or brought her home, and uh, so Flicka joined us. And, when we put her in the corral with this old cutting horse, she was so incensed, so indignant. This was horrible to be put here with this horse. She didn't think she was a horse, and but he was this old cutting horse. He was he he established what the pecking order was. And he didn't take any crap from her. He just pushed her around and made her behave and whatever. Made her become tried to make her into a horse. And we would I know when we come out the back door, she'd be watching for us from the corral, and she would just whinny and. And, you know, come over in and see me. I'm in this terrible place. Come give me some, uh, get some good words and whatever. So we go over, and she would just nuzzle us and reach over the fence. And she was so delighted to have us there for that moment of time. And she was just uh, really tired of that old cutting horse bullying her around. But uh, so, but you know, we couldn't ride her for a while, and uh, she didn't know what it was like to be ridden. Even it just sort of that was another indignity. Uh, and 
it was this year before dad, when she got to be a two-year-old, dad decided he was going to try and ride her, which she was, he did. He, he, he broke her, and, and since that's what you call it, you don't not physically hurt them. You get on and you ride them, and you, you get them to do what they're supposed to do. You teach them how to neck rein and whatever, and a lot of things. And she kind of adapted to that after a while. And uh, but, but anyway, I remember one time uh, we get in the corral with her, and she always come up and nuzzle you and whatever. And one time I had a friend out from uh, uh, from town who really didn't. The only time he got to see the farm was when he came out to our place, and he loved to come out there. And so his name was Danny, and he came into the. We got in the corral there with the horses and. Flicka came up, and Mom brought us out a couple of ice cream cones with some ice cream on it, and uh, the cone. And we were we were in there eating these, and Flicka came up and and just started to reach for Danny's ice cream cone, and he backed up against the fence, and he was holding the cone behind his back like this to keep it away from the horse, and the horse is reaching for it, reaching. Her neck was longer than his arm, and it wasn't. And it was within a second, she reached over there plucked that ice cream cone right out of his hand and just chomped it, swallowed it down. It was amazing she, how she liked ice cream, but uh, it was people food. That's what she was used to. Cause she would eat anything we brought out there, you know, uh, uh, all kinds of things, uh, cereal and uh, any kind of other candy and whatever. She, she, she really liked that. But Danny went, Danny was, had uh, lost his ice cream cone. And I was quick to finish mine up before I could get lose it too, but, uh, but anyway, this is this 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 horse. So when she, uh, uh, it was really she was a difficult horse to ride because she was very skittish and she wouldn't you couldn't touch her legs. You just thought that was that she'd just jump around. And one thing would happen when you try to get on her, she would shy away. So then you put your foot in the stirrup and try to swing your leg over. As soon as you started that, she'd jump away. So you were swinging your leg over on nothing, and so. Uh, I, I learned a way to fix that was to uh, put her next to the fence, so so she when she she was no place to jump away. That way I could get up on her and and, and ride her. But she was often difficult. She would shy from stuff and something that would startle her, and you had to be ready for her to do that sort of thing. And you had to hang on a lot. And so we, we did ride her around a lot. And, uh, we had a, a, the other horses too, and Danny would come out, and we would he he would normally ride the old cutting horse, and he was very easily managed. And we'd go down the road and wherever and visit other places. And uh, one time, uh, Danny said, "I want to ride Flicka." Okay, well, here get on her. And we got him up there, and I helped him on there, and, and uh, so we were walking down the road t uh, toward home, just leisurely walking with the horses and suddenly a uh, flicker took off on a, on a, gallop, a fast gallop and, uh, and well I was with, with our horse was called Taffy and so uh, the other Taffy, the cutting horse so I, I, tr I tried to keep up but Flicka was too fast and Taffy couldn't but anyway the horse was running and I looked up there after I was looking around but I looked up there and Danny disappeared the horse is still galloping down the way there, and I couldn't see him. And I looked around on the, on the side of the road or in the middle of the road. There wasn't no really Danny. I didn't know what happened to him. Well, I got closer, and I could see where Danny was. He was hanging on the horse's neck, and his feet were uh, swinging back and forth from one side to the other to keep from getting stepped on. And Flicker just kept going like it was nothing to matter. Nothing to matter. It didn't bother him a bit. And, but he hung on for about half a mile, got all the way back to the house. Flicker came up to the barn gate. Where, the, where they got, we kept the horses and stopped. He put his feet down, stood up, he was fine. I never questioned whether his arms were aching the next day or not, but anyway, uh, that was one of the little strange adventures we had with his horse. And uh, So she was always, so one time I got, I was riding her and she went up to a, there was a barbed wire fence. And I shouldn't have done, I didn't know this, to, to, would there be a problem, but she, we, just, we were standing there looking inside the, that pasture there where the cattle were grazing and she was just sort of fidgeting around and putting her feet up and down and she put her one of her feet over the top of the, that lower barbed wire fence and then she pulled back and she couldn't escape so she ran backed up into panic and the barbed wire came with her Bert jerked it loose from the fence and the barbed wire started cutting her and she had a fight with this barbed wire I got thrown off 
And uh, but then when I, you know, tried to get her loose from this thing, it was almost impossible because when I get close to her, I couldn't. Uh, she just, uh, it was dangerous. And so um, finally, she just got exhausted, and I was able to slip up to her and pull the wire off her foot. She jumped up again and took off, tried to take off again, and this time she was free. But her leg was lacerated all over. There's all these cuts from the barbed wire, and had to. Uh, we called the vet out. We had to uh, taper up for a while until she healed. And, but that was a, a lesson that I learned. You don't take a horse up next to a, 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 a wire fence like that, because they just they don't. They, they're used to putting their feet around and testing things and whatever. So feet are a very important part of the horse. If the feet go bad, the horse is. is if you don't get it fixed, the horse is going to die. So you have to keep their feet in, uh, together, the hooves trimmed and whatever. And that was a problem because normally horses take care of their hooves just by walking. And, uh, and particularly on hard surfaces, uh, on gravel and rocks, even asphalt on the road is good. To walk on there is good to keep the horse's uh, feet trimmed a little bit. But in the corral, it was soft and they really, then their, their, their hooves would get lo long. And, and un, unmanageable, and they'd, they'd be limping around because their hooves were the, the toenails. You have to cut them, so we would get in there with a hacksaw from time to time and cut the toenails off, so they could uh, toenails or the hooves cut them off, so they could uh, maneuver. So that was also difficult to do with Flicka because she didn't like you messing with her legs. But uh, we we managed to do that anyway, and. Uh, I remember her, her, pre her preference for people food was interesting too because I used to milk the cows in there and, I, and there were, we kept the cows in the, uh, with the horses. And we would, there were only two of them and I hand milked them every morning. And, uh, the, uh, and Flicka would stand in the door watching us milk the cows or watch me milking the cows. And uh, the cats were all there too and they were milling around. and. Uh, and they were waiting for that pan of milk. So when he got some finished milking, we pour, well, not quite halfway through the milking process, you would pour a little milk in a pan, maybe an inch or two into a pan that big around. And, and the cats would just dive and you know, just came over and immediately enjoying that milk. And Flicka saw that happening and she said, hey, I want some too. And she stuck her head in there, actually stepped up into the barn with one foot, leaned over, stuck her nose into the pan and pulled it over there by her where she was so she could then suck it all up with one big old gulp. And poor cats had, didn't, they got none of this. So anyway, she, she uh, enjoyed that milk. And once she'd gotten a taste of that, she wanted more of that. That was really good stuff. And uh, what, what happened was then the cows stopped giving as much milk. And I'd milk, I'd try to, I'd be milking them, and we'd only get a half a pail. I said, what's going on here? And finally we discovered she would take, she would trap these cows up against the fence where they couldn't move, put her body there and hold them there, reach down to the udders of the cow and suck the milk out of them, as, as if she were a, a baby calf. <laughs> here she is, a you know, three-year-old horse. And uh, so at that point, we had to separate her, separate the horses from the cows. The cows are rather relieved because they used to get pushed around. The old cutting horse, he still had this instinct to separate cattle and whatever, so he'd keep the two milk cows apart. And uh, they were relieved. They got him in a separate corral. And um, but anyway, that was another one of her antics that, that she got into. So it was uh, really a wild time with his horse, just as they got g going with her. She, Stayed around all through when I was all through high school, and I went off to college. And uh, when I came back from back home uh, a year later, uh, Dad, where are the horses? Oh, I sold them. Where are the milk cows? He says, Well, I lost my milker. <laughs> and I said, Oh, I guess I knew who that was. But anyway, I kind of missed those horses at that time. But but it was always a, a interesting story. This this horse that thought she was people.